welcome to episode 235 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 12th of January. So welcome everybody, I hope you've all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some sewing, I have a blast from the past which is knitting based and also Jensen based. <laughs> I have a gadget. I have some confessions. Oh dear. <laughs> I have a shop update and I've also got a little appearance from Jensen at the end of the podcast with something hand knit I finished this week. So we've got a couple of make-alongs going on the Ravelry group and on Instagram and I've popped details about those in the description bar down below. We've got the Craft 20 a day which is just basically working on big projects a little bit at a time and the Craft House Magic Baby Makes 2023 which I'd say baby but it's children as well. You can have children's clothes. Anything children's, it could be knitting, crochet or any craft so any double dipping is absolutely acceptable so please come and join in. Use the hashtags on Instagram or come pop over to the Ravelry groups. I also wanted to mention that sometimes if I haven't got enough to show on a podcast I might do a different type of video instead of a normal podcast episode like a tutorial or like a summary of certain types of makes so um, if you see a different type of video you know why I haven't got quite enough to show on the video or I don't think it's worth having a whole episode on the things that I've been making for that week. So let's get on with the knitting shall we? First of all I have actually I've got two finished objects to show you today. I have the Dennis Food socks. So these are a really cool pattern. They're a really different construction to what I'd normally do. It's a ribbed socket around the back but then there's horizontal ribbon on the front of the foot which I think is really cool. And then you've got a short row heel and decreases in a slightly different place than I've used before on a short row heel. But I absolutely love them and these are going to be for Adam actually. They they are knitted in some Rivenitz yarn in my Heartbleeds wine in a BFL base. Now this colourway is absolutely gorgeous but because it's BFL I decided to do socks with it because that's the that's what I think that BFL is most appropriate for really and I thought it went really well with this socks yeah contrast yarn that I had already in my stash. So these are the pair and they are for Adam so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get him to put them on um, so I can video him with them on so you can sort of see where the ribbon lies on the foot rather than just being on the sock blockers but I think it's a really interesting pattern and I'd definitely make it again. So that's called the Dennis Fug Socks by Nicola Susan and it is a beautiful pattern but it's a really nice fit especially if you've got a high instep so if you've got a very high instep if you've got a, a wide foot here between your heel and the top of your foot definitely try this pattern so the next finish object I've got to show you is something for Jensen and it is the first thing off my make nine list. So this is the spiral beanie and it's a pattern by Babby Kisotto, I think that's how you pronounce it, and I love this pattern. My friend Jo was telling me that her mum used to knit a pattern very very similar to this so I think it's one that's been going around for years and years and years but this is a free pattern on Ravelry and I'll leave a link to it in the description bar down below. So you basically knit this panel around here and it makes like a diamond shape and you join it together and you end up with like a short tube. Once you've done that you can pick up stitches around the bottom and do some one by one rib and then close up the top section um, which forms a spiral and I've added the hugest pom-pom in the world. <laughs> I got my pom-pom makers out and I, I was sort of measuring the size of the pom-pom maker up against the hat and I thought oh that would be nice and then it looks slightly bigger than I anticipated but I think it's good. But I love the way this sort of spirals in because I feel like you can get a lot more sort of stretch out of it and therefore a lot more wear. Now it's quite big on him at the moment but not too big so he can't wear it so I think that'll last for quite a while. The only thing that I would mention is that so Adam's mum actually knitted the main panel of the, the hat and then I've done the ribbing and the pom-pom on the top and sort of finished it off sewn it together um, but when Adam's mum had knitted it she carried yarn along the side of the panel so if you do that you will sort of reduce the stretchiness of that edge um, just a little bit so you might not be able to 
so it might not be quite as stretchy as the rest of the hat if that makes sense so if you want it to be as sort of stretchy as possible i would sew your ends in individually although that is a great big hassle what i did as well is that i actually i picked up stitches around here the method that the pattern said i think it said pick up three of every four stitches along the edge and I found that actually that come up really small I'd already knitted a few rows now I tried it on Jensen sort of with the nee needles dangling um, and it was just really really tight so I ended up picking up a stitch every stitch so it does flare out very slightly but once it's on that just gives him a little bit of extra room and makes it a little bit cozier rather than being too tight I must admit Jensen has got quite a large head for his age and I knitted the 12 to 18 months and he is about 14 months now and he has quite a large head so I think Jensen's head measures about 57 centimeters at the widest part um, so just an idea of what sort of size his head is for the for the actual um, 12 to 18 months. Um, Adam's mum is quite a loose knitter and I'm quite a tight knitter so because I knitted the rib that might have been the reason why it was a little bit tight when I only picked up three out of four stitches around the outside so that could have been a factor in there but I think that it's always good giving it a little bit of extra room so that it's not too tight on his head and we did go for a little walk earlier today and he had this hat on and I took some footage which I'll pop at the end of the podcast in the what Jensen is wearing section um, and he it did seem to stay on really fine weirdly Jensen will not wear a hat in the house obviously because it's not cold enough but when we're out he'll put hats and gloves and loads of things on so that is absolutely brilliant when you put a hat on him inside the house he's flinging it off straight away <laughs> Lesson. So I am going to go on to my blast from the past section which is out of the normal order that I normally do because it is knitting and it sort of links in with what I've been talking about already. So in the little clip that I'm going to show towards the end of the video where Jensen's wearing his little outfit he's got a couple of things on that match his hat. So first of all he's got these mittens on and these are the little win waiting for winter mittens by Susan B Anderson and I did them in the same yarns so these are Aran weight yarns and I dyed these all up actually I forgot to say when I mentioned the hat I dyed them all up in colorways that are from my fader gray mini set um, but I did them on an Aran weight yarn now I did originally plan to have this Donegal nep base in the Aran weight yarn in my shop but I decided that this weight of yarn the neps actually come out of it a little bit too easy so I don't stock this in the shop um, but I do have a plain merino adder and weight yarn I, I had a few skeins that i needed to dye up so i dyed them up to make jensen a few things so those are in the same colors i did the contrast cuff in the opposite colors with these mittens which i thought was really cute with these uh, this pattern i had a bit of difficulty with i did actually knit a tiny little i think it was six to nine months version and it was really tiny it would not go anywhere near jensen's hands although he might have big hands because he's got a big head <laughs> I ended up knitting like the two year old mittens so that they would fit um, and I did get gauge as well I measured my gauge so maybe Jensen has got huge hands <laughs> <laughs> these ones are actually about an inch long on him but I thought that it, they would last a bit longer I knitted an eye cord for these but I did it a little bit long so I ended up having to sort of knot it and I put it over the back of his um, cardigan when he's wearing them so he was wearing those in the video as well as the matching hat and he also had on the antler cardigan which you couldn't see properly in the video so I thought I'd show it to you here so this is a tin can knits pattern and actually it goes from a baby to a a large adult size pattern so we have actually got matching ones of these um but this is jensen's version and it's got some lovely cables in this is a one-year-old size and actually it still fits him absolutely fine i will knit some more of these it's brilliant that the size goes right up to adult size because you can just keep knitting more and you don't have to do the cables around the neck you could just do a plain one using the same instructions if you wanted to again i'm using the same aran yarn with the donegal nep in that i was going to stock in the shop but i decided i didn't like the neps because they sort of come out of the thicker yarn more easily um, but there we go that is what he had on he also had the habitation throw which is a 
a Helen Stewart pattern but I didn't bring it up but I think you can see it quite well in the video at the end so I will leave links to the patterns um, and you can see it on Jensen at the end of the video so that is my knitting section I have some sewing to show you so I have been joining together some really cute little half inch hexagon so this fabric is a lovely set of fabrics by Lynette Anderson and I have joined quite a lot of these edges but there are some that I haven't finished joining together so I haven't quite finished this but I wanted to get the whole thing together as a whole so that you could sort of see what it was going to look like and it's going to be in the on the lid of a box I'm making so this is an Emma Jones vintage sewing box pattern and you can see the same motif I've put in the bottom of my box. Emma's pattern actually had um, pockets all on the inside but because I'm going to put my sewing case, my hexagon sewing case inside this, I haven't put the pockets on mine but I wanted to put a little motif in the bottom so I made up this little motif. So for the English paper piecing that I'm doing here I've used some Ashmead Designs hexiforms which are a sort of spongy fabric um, shape that you can leave inside your English paper piece and so you don't actually have to take the shapes out. Also it gives like a slightly raised texture on your shapes um, so I've used some half inch hexagons here. I used some different shapes in this one. I will pop the links um, to Ashmead Designs hexaforms and also tell you what shapes I had but they're only they're all half inch ones because they fit nicely together. So go to make a lid for this. I'm using the bottom template that I use for the bottom for the lid but I think now I've put it up against it I'm gonna to have to take like an eighth of an inch off around the outside in order to get it to fit because I want it to fit in the recess that's here. Now when I lined mine I I just like to <laughs> make life difficult for myself really. But I also used wadding as a lining as well as the interfacing in here just because I wanted to make myself difficult. I wanted to make it feel squishy and really quality. Um, so I ended up having to take an eighth of an inch off all the pattern pieces on the inside. So it did make my life difficult. I don't um, advise to do what I did. Follow the pattern. <laughs> but I did do this um, extra bit of wadding in here which makes this inside lining piece a little bit thicker. Which means that actually if I made the lid so it fits just on the inside of this ridge it would fit really nicely. So I'm going to take a little bit off the edge of this lid shape and get that to fit nicely on that recess on the inside. I think I'm going to stitch it along one side and then have some sort of closures all the way around the edge. The lid you see doesn't come with the original pattern it's just an unlidded design um, and when I'd actually finished it I thought I really could do with a lid really to stop the dust getting into it um, but I thought because I'd already put these motifs on the centre of the panel if I put a lid that overlapped the outside it would just sort of unbalance the side panel so that's why I haven't done that. Another idea I had was to do two half pieces and then have that open and close like this um, but I thought I'd just end up with it sort of sagging into the middle if I didn't stabilise it enough so I knocked that idea on the head. So I'm just going to see how this goes. If it doesn't work then I can just redo it and do something slightly different so we shall see how I get on. So my gadget section links into the sewing section. This is why I've done it in this order so that it all links in nicely. So because I've been doing some English paper piecing I was able to try out my new glasses. So these are magnifying glasses and the there is a box with different lenses in um, so you can pick which lens is more suitable for you. And it has a light on the front which is brilliant so you can press the button and you can change the brightness as well so it goes on brighter and then off with a button at the side and the thing that i like about these is that the weight of the battery is in the side arms so that you don't have anything weighing on your nose the older set i had had the battery compartment over the top of the nose so I didn't end up using the light on it because of that extra weight on my nose. It would become uncomfortable after a couple of hours. This one seems absolutely fine actually. I'm really pleased with this. I do find that I have to use the grip on the back of the head because otherwise they fall off my nose. And I can wear them with my glasses. But actually for me, I can wear this magnification without my glasses underneath, which just makes it a little bit less sort of complicated with wearing less on my head. Um, 
so i really am pleased with this this holds it on really nicely you can actually take the elastic backing off um but it's just absolutely brilliant they are rechargeable as well so you don't have to keep putting new batteries in there is a little mini usb port in the bottom and you can plug that in and charge it up but mine actually I haven't charged them yet i've just been using them straight out of the box and they already had charge in them a friend of mine actually ordered some of these from amazon as well and she said that hers the light wouldn't work but she contacted them said they didn't work and they sent her a new pair out um so seems pretty good customer service i'm not quite sure whether she got the same listing as me so there because there seems to be quite a few of these out there but i will pop the one that i got um they seem to come quite quick quickly from Amazon I couldn't really see them on any sort of smaller businesses um, so I picked mine up from Amazon I don't have any affiliate links for Amazon um, it's just where I've got my stuff from so there we go lovely gadget if you like to do English paper piecing or close-up work with very small things that are difficult to see especially at night so my next section is confession I have an excuse because two of the th items are birthday presents so they're not they're guilt free <laughs> so my lovely friend Liz who is not a knitter picked out these gorgeous gorgeous yarns and I am so pleased with them especially with this bright bright pink one because I'm thinking I need more bright pink in my life but it is called the bend and snap and Liz and I went to see legally blonde on stage and it was just brilliant so that is a lovely sort of memory as well and um, so i'm really pleased with that and she'd also bought me teal deal colorway which is a gorgeous tealy color these two of my favorite colors in the world i think and they are both from lay family yarn so the pink is in a 75 percent superwash merino 25 percent nylon um in a fingering weight yarn and the teal is a dk in an organic non-superwash dk and it feels really luxurious so i'm excited to use that i'm thinking hat for this one i'm not sure about this combination but i thought that these two went together quite well um this is actually reading slightly less purple than it is in real life but i thought those two went together i don't know whether that sort of tones down the bright pink too much um but this yarn is the one i picked up from um norfolk yarn up the city just before christmas and this is a malabrigo yarn in the 136 sabiduria colorway um which is also a finger and weight yarn so i don't know whether to put those two together or not um but i think they go together quite well it's whether um i want to tone down that bright pink so if you watched my make nine list you'll know that i wanted to knit the expecto patronum mittens and i thought i really have to stick to the colors that they've been sort of designed in not exactly the same but more or less um you've got like a dark background with some blue um writing on i thought that looked like this looks like the patronus um sort of color that they use in the films etc but i picked a black with some flecks of grays in because i thought that that's nice having a bit of a tonal and then this sort of pale blue so the pale blue is colorway sea foam in colorway 75 and the black is called charcoal in colorway 81 um so those i think will make a lovely expecto patronum mittens and then I've got um there's a pattern that I wanted to do with a bird on it um I'll pop links to these patterns as well in the description bar down below if you didn't see the make nine targets um but I thought I'd put these two colors together now I quite like not too much of a contrast for color work sometimes so I thought I'd do that here I've got a pink and a sort of lilac color this is FC21 and this pink is the 1283 um, so I think those will be really nice and these are all Jameson and Smith and I got them directly from the Jameson and Smith website um, and I've got two skeins of each of those so I have got lots of things to be getting on with so that is all my naughty confessions but they're, they are for planned things so that's okay <laughs> so you don't care i have some information on my shop now and then i've got a little appearance from jensen so watch out for that
So in terms of my online shop, I've mentioned a couple of weeks previously that I've got the January Yarn Clubs. I have extended the listing until Monday morning just because I haven't had a chance to dye them up yet. So I just thought I'd give you the opportunity to purchase those if you want to. So the January Yarn Clubs, the Mixtape Minis and also the Music from the Movies those are all going to be on the website till early Monday morning as well as the Winter Wishes um, project bag and yarn sets. I won't talk about them too much because the last two episodes I've talked about them um, at the end of the video. So if you want a bit more information you can either pop to a previous video or if you just go to the listing there's lots of details on the website. So those will all be taken down on very early in the morning on the 16th of January. So over to you, Jensen. So Jensen is wearing his spiral beanie and his mittens that match. I'm really pleased with these. The, the hat actually has got quite a lot of room in it, so plenty of room um, for when he gets a little bit bigger. But we had to come outside to show you because he won't put a hat on indoors, but if it's cold, he'll put it on, which is lovely. So he's got his mittens uh, in the matching yarn with it these are a little bit big there's about an inch of space um, on the end of his fingers but he is wearing them and he, he actually wears knitwear if it is cold outside but not so much indoors he will not put a hat on gloves indoors um, but oh look you're showing us your gloves well done <laughs> and with his hat and mittens he's got a habitation throw as a blanket round his neck to keep him nice and cozy um, and he's got it like a cowl really. I'll have to knit you a cowl to match Jensen And underneath he's got his antler cardigan underneath um, I'll see if we can see what it looks like. There we go You can see the cables a little bit around his neck, but I'll tuck that in nice and warm so you don't get cold But how lovely is that spiral and the pom-pom on the top of his hat? Um, so there we go. Say bye bye Jensen Say bye bye So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I shall see you in the next video. Bye!